Good morning. I think this has got to be pretty much one of the best times of the year if you're a gardener because this is the time when all your hard work from the greenhouse um, comes out. You harden it off and you get it into the ground. So I've got loads to get into the ground today. It's a really good day. So I'm just going to crack on and start and get these in. These are um, beans, a variety called Selma Zebra. Don't know what they're going to be like. Um, they're, they're nice and healthy, but they're quite spindly. But I suspect that's just the variety that they are. Anyway, I've got a frame up here already and I'm just getting them in. I've got a nice little collection of beans going on in this board. I'm pretty pleased with how it's turning out. I've got a good variety going on. Um, and everything at the minute looks quite healthy. I have noticed today there's a little bit of slug damage on a couple of the runner beans. But we're actually forecast for rain this evening. So my plan is to come up and do a, a slug hunt. I've decided my best defence against the, fl the slugs is to just literally pick them off by hand um, so coming up when it's wet the slugs all come out because they like that and hopefully I'll get a few there we are that's a nice little row of Selma zebra beans And talking of slugs, I don't know whether you saw my video, I think it was a couple of videos ago, I cut up these pieces of wool that come as packaging and I placed them around my lettuces to keep the slugs off. Well, I had used that before and I thought it had worked, but this time I'm afraid abject failure. Even though it's netted, when I came back a couple of days later or the next day or whatever, almost all of the wool had actually vanished. <laughs> you couldn't make it up. Um, I think what's happened is... Probably a bird has come and sat on this and actually yanked it through this this net and it's quite a um, big holes in it. I think they've yanked it through and taken it away for nest material. Either that or mice, but uh, might be big mice or a lot of them to take all of that stuff. And the bit that was left, when I lifted it up, there was actually a slug like in bed tucked up underneath it. <laughs> so I figured the wool wasn't working. So we've gotten rid of that. Next thing I want to put in this morning is my courgettes. Very excited to get my courgettes in and they look really healthy this year. Last year uh, they were dying before I put them in. They were tiny and all yellow, obviously nutritionally depleted, but um, yeah, these are good. They're going in. I've got four here. These are a variety called Kooza. Let's tell you what they're like. They're organic Trieste white half long Kooza courgette. They're a bulbous courgette, originally from the Middle East, then from Italy. Very pale green, almost steel grey, strong bushes, quick and early with high production. All sounds good to me. So I've got four of them there. I've also planted um, courgettes in the back garden yesterday on a patch I've got there. And that were a variety, they were a variety called Early Prolific Straight Necked Summer Squash. So not strictly speaking courgettes, I suppose. Lemon yellow fruit with gently bumpy skin, introduced in 1938, blah, blah, blah. Used like a courgette, yeah? So I've got a straight neck variety and this grey Kooza courgette. Really looking forward to them. I've got a lot of plants. I think I put five in the back garden and I've got another four there. And I know everybody will be throwing their hands up in dismay saying far too many. However, 
um, I do use them. What I did last year, I, had, I think I had six plants in last year. Um, and obviously you get a massive excess when they all start to crop. I just grated them up and put them into portions and put them in the freezer. And I've used them all year since then, just if I'm making a lasagna or a casserole or anything, I just get a load of this courgette out or soup and put it in. So it lasts all year. So I don't mind having a lot. <laughs> This is the border that the courgettes are going into. I've got this two big piles of uh, compost on here. I might have a bit too much, actually. I might have to take some off. Um, the compost is very coarse. I'm a bit worried it's not quite rotted down enough, but we'll give it a try and see how we'll get on. Just need to spread it out. Oh, hang on, there's some bindweed. Let me get that. Well, it's a bit rough and ready, like most things I do, but I'm sure it'll be fine. I've got four plants. I reckon that's just the right um, size border to put four in. For once in my life, I won't be cramming things in. I seem to do that with everything. planting these in a zigzag in this border if you're short on space which I always am um, planting things in a zigzag in a border rather than in a straight line is a good way to maximize your space oh hang on look at that a little blighter underneath the seed tree I'll get rid of him later sorry snail oh gotta go Trouble is with snails, I find them really cute with their little horns. Slugs I can just kill, but that little guy, I can't kill him. I'm gonna have to just walk out the allotment now and put him in the field. <laughs> Right, that's it. Courgettes are in. I'm delighted about that. Feels like a landmark. Uh, the compost isn't too bad. I mean, there are some big bits of wood in, but I think it'll be all right. Um, courgettes like a nice rich soil. That holds a lot of moisture, so good. Okay, the next thing to go in the ground are these Asturian tree cabbages. I'll just give you the lowdown on what these are. Well, these are all from real seeds so far. It's called Paul and Becky's Asturian tree cabbage. Absurdly enormous leaves, grows like a kale. Take the young leaves a few at a time to eat all the year round. Very rare from Asturias in Spain. So, sounds interesting. I've just got this one little spot here to put them in and I've got two, four, six, eight, ten and I'm not going to fit them all in there. As I say, I always plant things too close but even I'm not going to put ten in. Uh, and then after that I'm going to have to find a way to net them because I think they're probably going to um, be favoured by the birds or the uh, butterflies. Forget that. I'm going to plant these nice and deep. I've never grown them before, but if they're like a kale or a cabbage, I forget a nice deep plant will do them good. Plus they're pretty floppy. I'm just going to plant them about the space that I would plant a kale. a 
butterfly, that's a moth. Um, well, I've realised I've ran out of the uh, fine mesh, the insect netting. I haven't got any, so I'm going to have to go and order some more. But I figure if I can keep the birds off for now, that'll be enough. I think they're the main threat at the minute. And I haven't seen any cabbage white butterfly about, although I did just see a little moth just there. All right, I think we're winning now. Last thing of the day is I've got this tree of giant sunflowers. I love sunflowers. I put them in every year around the garden and in the allotment. I haven't got the exact giant ones before. I mean, they've been pretty big, but the lady in the next allotment had giant ones last year. They were enormous. They looked great. So I bought a pack of the seed this year. They're already pretty big. I'm just going to push two or three in the border somewhere. I don't know where I'm going to find them. Oh. I think I'll try and plant a row along the back of where these courgettes have gone in. Might look quite nice. Well, I'll leave you there. Hope your veg is all going really well. We'll catch you next time. Bye for now.